Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring James Stewart and Jane Wyman in Magic Town. Tonight, the Lux Radio Theater comes to you from Hollywood as usual, but your producer speaks to you from Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. William Keeley. <laughs> Greetings from Washington, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, I started shooting my forthcoming picture at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. And that is why I come to you tonight from Washington, D.C. And rest assured that nothing less imperative could keep me from being on your stage in person, especially at tonight's performance. For Magic Town, I think, is one of the season's most refreshing screen hits and should be doubly rewarding with the two stars of this RKO release, James Stewart and Jane Wyman. I won't give away the plot, except to say that it's based on a unique and typically American phenomenon, the public opinion poll, which, sooner or later, ferrets out our tastes in everything from radio to uh, a rhubarb. Of course, one national poll that goes on every day is your selection of the things you buy from a seat at the theater to a box of soap flakes at the store. And when it comes to the latter, your preference for Lux reflects not only on the product, but on you yourselves. For every time you ask for Lux, you're casting your vote for a better, more discriminating way to care for nice things. It's curtain time, and we present Act One of Robert Riskin's production, Magic Town starring James Stewart as Rip Smith and Jane Wyman as Mary Peterman. When Rip Smith got out of the Army, he resumed his practice of taking the pulse of the American public. No, Rip Smith is not a doctor. He's head of the Institute of Public Opinion, which is one way of saying that he... Well, suppose we explain it by hearing from one or two of his former clients. I manufacture automobiles. Before we put our post-war model on the market, we hired the Institute of Public Opinion. They canvassed the entire country, found out exactly what the public wanted in a new car. I'm editor of a woman's magazine. Last year, we doubled our circulation. How? By putting the Institute of Public Opinion on the job. They discovered just what our magazine needed to get more readers. Yes, that's Mr. Smith's business, finding out what the American public thinks. But in recent months, clients have been very scarce, and overhead has gone up and up, until on this particular morning, Rip Smith is no longer in business. Well, Rip, you can't say I didn't warn you. I'll pull up a chair and gloat, Charlie, I don't mind. Well, I was right, wasn't I? What about? About my method of polling public opinion. Too expensive, you said. You were going to find some miraculous shortcut. Well, somewhere there is a shortcut, Charlie. A mathematical miracle. Some way to question, say, 50 or 100 people, all in one little small town, perhaps, and find out exactly what the entire country is thinking. Rip, and that's I just have... nonsense. It costs money to get public opinion. It takes time. A lot of both. Now, now, Rep, I want you to come in with me. Oh, thanks, Charlie. I'll think about it. Now, you're in no position to be fussy. Here, look at this report. It's your report, Rep, to the McKenzie Company. No wonder they canceled your contract. Well, what's the matter with that report? Look at my figures and you'll see. Here. These are the figures we got on exactly the same subject. You weren't even close. Let's see. In favor, 68.1. Against, 24.2. Five, undecided, 7.4. Quite a discrepancy, I'd say. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. Charlie Stringer, I love you. Huh? With all my heart, I love you. Then you accept my offer? No, Charlie, I don't accept your offer, but thanks, thanks very much. Mr. Twiddle! Hey, Ike, come in here. Ike, it's wonderful. I told you it would work. Get in here, will you? What's the matter with you? 
Where's Charlie Stringer? He's gone, but lock the door. He may change his mind and come back. Boys, boys, I think I've found it. The shortcut I've been looking for. Remember that letter I got from Hoopendecker? Oh, yes. Your school teacher friend. Ex-Sergeant Hoopendecker. What a man. Listen to this. Listen to what he wrote me. When I got your letter, Rip, I tested public opinion here in Grandview on the subject you suggested. And here's the result. In favor, 68.1. Against, 24.5. Undecided, 7.4. What's Hoopendecker got to do with... Now look at this. Stringer's poll from McKenzie and Company. Stringer canvassed thousands of people all over the country from coast to coast, cost of fortune. Hoopendecker canvassed a handful of people in one little small town. All right, Ike. All right. Read Stringer's figures. In favor, 68.1. Against, 24.5. Undecided, 7... Just the same. I... Identical. One small town that thinks exactly the way the whole country thinks. You're talking about a utopia. Well, maybe it is utopia. Ike, Mr. Twiddle. All right, get me Hoopendecker on the phone. No, no, I'll call him up myself. Call up the Census Bureau. Oh, and get me the Almanac, too. Get me the Atlas. Grand view, huh? This could be it. This could be it. It's four o'clock, Rip. We haven't had lunch. All right, we're, we're... I'm, I'm finished, Ike. Boy, oh, boy, I knew that somewhere there was a town like this. Look at these figures. Even the population breaks down exactly the way the whole country does. Males, females, the whole country in a test tube. What Grandview thinks, what Grandview does, Hello? the entire nation Ooh. thinks and does. Exactly. Oh, yes, Mr. McKenzie, Mr. Yeah, Twiddle, you know, we're going to Grandview. We, we are. are. We Pick are. up the phone, Sir. Rip. It's McKenzie. Oh, oh. Hello, Miss McKenzie? You got my message, huh? Now listen, I know you gave Stringer a contract for a poll on progressive education, right? He's been working on it for months, hasn't he? All right. Now suppose I start right now and I finish in three weeks. What would you say to that? I tell you it is possible. And I'll guarantee to come within 1% of Stringer's figures. Huh? All right, now let me get this straight. You put me on trial, and if this thing goes over, you renew my contract. Right? That's all I want to know. Thanks, Mackenzie. Grandview, you good old mathematical miracle, here we come. Well, did you see your old pal, Hoopendecker? Did I see Hoopendecker? Certainly I saw Hoopendecker. Can you imagine it? I can, in the army, we used to call him Dirty Face. Now he's over there in the high school teaching romance languages. Hmm. He knows what we're up to, huh? Yeah, and he's going to help us, too. Hoop knows everybody in town. I'm meeting him later this afternoon. Do you know where? The Old Town Meeting Hall. Best place in the world to get acquainted with the leading citizens. Well, let's pray that these good people here stay average, that they don't change. What do you mean? Hoop says they haven't changed in 50 years. Oh, I promised him I'd help him with the basketball team. He's coaching the basketball team or something. Say, where'd Mr. Twiddle go, anyway? Hmm. Back to the hotel, if you'll pardon the expression. What's the matter? It's a wonderful hotel. Moody's Mansion House. I tell you, I did... Everything about this town is just perfect. Look, Rip, supposing this bird is America, we can't go around getting opinions from the same people over and over again. They're going to get self-conscious, and once they do, you can toss their opinions right out the window. That's why they're never going to know what we're here for. You and Mr. Twiddle and me are now insurance salesmen. Oh. Come to Grandview to go on a business. Oh, no, See? Rip, no, yeah. no. As insurance agent, we can contact everybody in town. Get answers on anything we want to know. It won't it? work. It will work. It will work. I've got enough money to keep us going until we get started. Where are you going now? Over to the municipal building. Get acquainted with the city fathers. Well, anything you want me to tell Mr. Twiddle? Yeah, yeah. Tell Mr. Twiddle to sharpen his pencil and rough out a chart. We're in business again, brother. <laughs> young man. There's a council meeting going on in there. Well, do you suppose I could go and listen? Go on in if you want to. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. The park and the playgrounds would go right here, gentlemen. As you can see, they're clearly indicated on this map I made. Oh, oh, and here's where the hospital would go. Does that answer your question, Mayor Barnes? I still insist that plan of yours is preposterous. Now, what do you think, Cosmo Dickett? Oh, Mary Peterman's been coming here for years. 
There ought to be a what's this? A law against having to listen any longer. This is a free country, gentlemen. The girl has a right to be heard. Oh, thank you, Mr. Nickleby. And I shall continue to exercise that right until I've drilled it into your thick skulls that Grandview needs this new civic center. Well, what about the hooses, huh? The upkeep. That'd mean more what you would call it, wouldn't it? Texas. Mr. Dickett, did it ever occur to you that social improvements would attract new industry so that we could afford it? Always wanting changes. Changes, changes. Of course I want changes. It's about time we grew up and made Grandview a better place to live in. No, no, Mary, you talk like this place was the back bumper of the universe. Why, this is a very fine community. Well, of course it is. Huh? Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I beg your pardon. I, I didn't mean to butt in like this. Well, that's all right, young fellow. Speak up. Well, I don't know whether I have the right to speak up or not. I just arrived in Grandview today. Well, uh, what do you think of it? Huh? What, do you, what, what do you think of it? What do I think of it? Why... I've been searching for a community like this for years. Oh, you like Grandview, do you? I've just walked through your town, folks, with its stately elm trees and its lovely old homes. And I said to myself, here is a sturdy challenge to the evils of this modern era. Oh, you did, did you? uh, you, I I watched your people on the street. I felt their vitality, their sense of security. All in about an hour, huh? In, I, I, there's real beauty here. It's almost indescribable. But you take it for granted. To me, a stranger, it's a hope and a dream of a lifetime. I, too, want to become a part of it. Now, folks, please don't change Grandview. Please don't ever change it. Why, hearing him talk like that makes me feel, whatchamacallit, proud. That's the kind of new blood this town needs. I move we adjourn and forget all this nonsense about a civic center. Well, thank you, thank you very much. However, I'll be here again at the next meeting. A young man, come into my chambers. I'd like to talk to you. I'm sorry I'm late, Hoop and Tucker. You know where I've been saying the town was Mayor Barnes. And <laughs> what a wonderful town. Oh, we like it anyway. Well, here's our old town meeting hall. Say, th- this is great. Just an old-fashioned community hall where folks drop in and say hello to each other. Well, if you're ready to meet some of our citizens, I'll... Yeah, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that newspaper? This uh, Grandview Dispatch. Let me look at it, will you? I may be wanting to take an ad out in a couple of days. Lawrence Smith and Associates General Insurance. Well, why not? Uh, your name's already in the paper, Rip. Oh, it is? Oh, I wouldn't know about that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Mr. Lawrence Smith, on his first day in town, managed to poke... Managed to poke his unwelcome... Probosis into the council meeting. Well, that's pretty cute, isn't it? And that's not all, pal. Yeah. If you're really here to sell insurance, Mr. Smith, you would do well to start building goodwill and confidence before you tell us how to run our local affairs. Uh, where's the slaughterhouse that publishes this thing? Just down the street. Why? Well, because I'm going to see the editor. That's why, right now. <laughs> Where's the editor? I want to see the editor of this imitation newspaper. Well, uh, well, now, sir. Where is she, anyway? Uh, stranger in town, huh? Uh, editor died ten years ago. Uh, Miss come on, Peterman. Come on, come on, will you tell us? Uh, uh, gentleman here, kind of purple. Well, young man, I gather you have a complaint. Well, it's this story about me and the town tidbits. What, have you seen it? Oh, yes, I proofread every word we print. Now, what's your complaint? Well, it's, it's snide, that's what it is, taking advantage of an innocent stranger, these nasty, weaselly little digs, you know, no decent newspaper. If you want to attack the policy of this newspaper, young man, write us a letter. We'll be glad to print it. Meantime, you can do your complaining to the acting editor who wrote the story. All right, I'll talk to the acting editor. Oh, Mary, this young man wants uh-uh, to speak to uh-uh, you. Oh, uh-uh. did you wish to see me? Oh, oh, hmm? Oh, yes, yes, I, uh... You were the young lady at the council meeting this morning, weren't you? Well? 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 Well, you, uh... I, I just wanted to thank you for that very nice little story you wrote about me. No, oh, I thought you mm-hmm. came in to complain. Complain? Me? Oh, no, no. Not at all. I, I, I always believe in what the fellow said. There's just one thing worse than being talked about, that's and that's not, not being, being talked, talked about, about at all. Hmm? Hmm? Well, in that case, you won't mind the second story I'm going to write about you. No, not at all. Not at all. If you'd excuse me, I'll get to work. Yeah, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Hey. Hey, look here. Now, look at this story you wrote about me. Here you say right here, quote, 
If you're really here to sell insurance, Mr. Smith, you'll do well and so on and so on and so on. What, what's, what's with that? What's with that creates suspicion? Oh, Grandview's already overcrowded with insurance agents. A clever man like you ought to stay away. A clever man like me doesn't mind competition. Now, wouldn't you like to sort of just write a little retraction, something about being a little hasty, maybe, or... But on for, further observation, this fellow Smith seemed like a very charming fellow. Wouldn't you like to do that? No, I certainly wouldn't. No, you certainly wouldn't. Oh, Mr. Hodges. Yes, ma'am. It's getting a little sticky in here. Think I'll go street, across the street and have a soda. Hi, sis. Hey, I got a great scoop for you. Who do you think's in town? Who? Rip Smith. Mr. Hoopendick, I told you. Now, now, now calm down, you. Bobby. Calm down. Hi. Hi. Hi, who are you? Hmm? Well, I gather his nickname is Rip. Are you kidding? Mr. Smith? Gosh, we were just going over to the hotel to see you. Oh, that's all. Who's we? Some of the fellows on the basketball team. Mr. Hoopendecker said it was all right. He said you were the greatest guy in the world. Is that a fact? Huh? Well, I think he might have exaggerated a little. And he said you agreed to help coach the basketball team. Gosh, I can hardly believe it. Well, I think I'll leave you two to discuss your business. It's true, isn't it, Mr. Smith? Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, that is, if you think I can be of any help. Oh, boy. Let's, uh... Talk about things over a soda or something. You see, there are a few things I'd like to straighten out with your sister. Oh, well, I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Smith. I want to tell the gang. What'll it be, mister? Well, I'll have the same as that young lady o ordered over there. I ordered a headache, Father. Uh, just what I need. Uh, Goodbye, Mr. Smith. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, don't go. No, I'm, I'm going to be around here for quite a while. Now, you have to get used to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're right. I've gotten used to some pretty weird goblins in this town. Goblins, huh? Mm -hmm. How'd that thing go about goblins? What was that goblin? Goblins, you'd better mind your parents and your teachers for them there. Mm -hmm. Cherish them that loves you. Dry the orphan's tear. And help the poor and needy ones that's clustered all about, or the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. And that's from a poem called The Goblins Will Get You If You Don't Watch Out. That's from a poem called Little Orphan Annie. Little Orphan Oh, by George, that's right. Here you are, Mary, and one just like it for you, mister. Oh, headache powder. Thank you. Chocolate flavor, huh? Fine. Say, tell me, tell me about this civic center of yours. After the way you shot your great big mouth off this morning? Wasn't that stupid and not knowing anything about it or anything? Yes. Yeah. Hope it didn't do any harm. No, only set progress back a few years, that's all. Why did you butt into the meeting? Because I was just busting with good spirits, that's all. The town looked so perfect to me, I couldn't imagine anybody wanting to change it. Sure there wasn't some other reason? Hmm? Well, it's the Oh, Mr. Smith, well, some of the fellows have to go home, and we thought maybe, well, for a starter, you could explain the back past dilemma to us. It says in the basketball guide that Rip Smith used it to perfection. It does, huh? How are you, fellas? Oh, hi. Hi. The what dilemma? The what dilemma? Quiet, please. Oh. Quiet. I, I brought along a basketball just in case you'd like to show us some play. Well, no, I don't think... Well, well why not? Come on out. Come on. Let, let's go outside and I'll show you what I mean. Come on. It's okay, fellas. Glad you dropped by. Bye. Bye. So that's the back pass dilemma, huh? Well, I was building goodwill and confidence. Well... well I'm uh, sure you made an excellent impression, Mr. Smith, with the boys. No, well, don't rush off. Now, you were going to tell me about the uh, new civic center. Was I? <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, I paid for my own soda, Mr. Smith. Goodbye. Ouch. <laughs> All right, Ike, now listen. You too, Mr. Twiddle. Now we can start peddling insurance. We've got our own office and everything set. Now, here's what we do. We start gabbing with the folks about insurance, and then very gradually, very cleverly, we sort of sneak up on the subject. See? Yeah, yeah. Talk to a man about his life expectancy, but find out what he thinks of progressive education. Right. Uh, okay, here I go. No, no, today's Sunday. Start tomorrow. Eat your meals at different restaurants. Talk to the waiters, cashiers. Go to the barber shop. Get your hair cut. I just have it cut. Have it cut again. Find out what the manicures thinks, the fellow at the newsstand. Yeah, what do I do? You get out your little old tabulating sheet, Mr. Twiddle, and start arriving at conclusions. Yes, indeed. Then, uh, then there's nothing to do today, huh? Well, I'm going back to bed and sleep. Wait a minute. No, you're not. Come on. We're all going to church.
Well, this is it, Mary. This is the spot I was telling you about in church. Whew, it's, it's quite a walk up here. Gosh, isn't it beautiful? Look over there. You can see the whole town from there. Well, if I ever get to New York, I'll show you the sights. Uh, you know, I, I brought the boys up here yesterday. Good for their legs and basketball team. <laughs> Frankly, I, I never expected to make the basketball team. Oh, now, come on. Sit down. Oh. Sit down. Relax. All right, all right. I'm relaxed. Good, yes. good. Now, start telling me about it. That civic center. Whose idea was it, yours? Well, actually, it was a legacy from my father. <laughs> he never could put it over, though. But you will, won't you? You bet I will. Yep. Of course, uh, you set me back a little, but I'll put it over. It's the only thing my father left me when he died. A worthwhile job to do. Oh, I, I thought he left you the newspaper. No, no, we just worked there, Mother and I. You call yourself acting editor. Who's the editor? Papa. There could only be one edited for that paper. He, he still runs it, sort of, you know. Oh, I like that. You know, you sound like him. Sometimes you even look like him. But you're not like him at all. Papa wasn't so desperate. What are you desperate for, money, power? Are you reading the bumps in my head? Mm, the air always gets all charged with electricity around desperate men. I feel it now, strong. You having fun? Mm -hmm. Do you mind? No, no. What causes it, Mr. Smith? Does it all go back to when you were a boy? Or was your childhood so terribly ugly? You see, it doesn't all add up. The electric currents and selling insurance. Or maybe you need a new crystal ball. No, no. No, nothing wrong with the old one. Want to know what I see in it? Before you're through, you'll be running for mayor of this town. Well, what's so awful about that? Well, the awful part of it is, I'll probably vote for you. Now, shall we get back to town? Huh? In just a moment, our stars will return with Magic Town. Hmm, uh, new hat, Libby? I felt I just had to have one after William Powell showed me all of his. He has a terrific wardrobe of hats for the new Nunnally Johnson production, The Senator Was Indiscreet, in which he starred. Do senators need such a lot of hats? <laughs> well, Universal International thought this one did, for campaigning. A miner's cap, Indian feathers, a railroad man's cap, ten-gallon stetson, mortarboard, and plantation owner's straw. I understand Ella Raines has the part of a career woman in The Senator Was Indiscreet. Yes, and she gives a good account of herself. She has a terrific fight with Peter Lynn Hayes. Oh? Who won? Well, Ella, of course. She kicked, slapped, and bit, leaving poor Peter with black and blue shins and teeth marks on his hands. Ella came through with only a broken fingernail, not even a stocking run. Well, naturally. Ella is a Lux girl. And barring outright accidents, stockings washed with Lux flakes last considerably longer. Strain tests by a scientific laboratory proved that. Ella says she learned about Lux for stockings years ago. Her maid never uses anything else. Just why so many smart girls have such good luck with stockings. Those strain tests showed that stockings actually last twice as long when they're washed with Lux Flakes. Identical stockings washed with a strong soap or rubbed with cake soap went into runs quickly. But the Lux ones lasted twice as long. So that makes Lux practically a Santa Claus. Because with Lux, it's just like getting an extra pair of stockings every time you buy a pair. Act Two of Magic Town, starring Jane Stewart as Rip Smith and Jane Wyman as Mary Peterman. <laughs> Convinced that Grandview is the perfect barometer of American thinking and hence a potential gold mine, Rip Smith and his two assistants, under the guise of insurance agents, are secretly gathering all the information they need for their trial poll of public opinion. But Rip has developed other interests in Grandview, the high school basketball team, and Mary Peterman. It's about 10 o'clock at night now, and in a classroom in the high school... Oh, come in, Rip. How did the basketball practice go? Good, 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 Did good. my brother tell you I was here? No, he said something about a meeting going on. Or something. Oh, yes, our, our final committee meeting for the basketball dance tomorrow night. The, um... The others just left. Oh, uh, excuse me. Hello, Mr. Quincy. 
Uh, I'd sure like to sweep up in here, if you don't mind. Well, be on the matter, Mr. Quincy. Just looking around. Now, uh, you know, there's something about the smell of an old classroom that always gets me. Was this was this one of your classrooms? Mm-hmm. Oh, amazing. Say, those pictures on the wall, uh, graduation pictures, aren't they? Yeah. She is one of them. Are you, are you here? Yeah, uh... Uh, wait, wait, no, no, don't show me. Don't show me. No, wait a minute. No, I can pick you up. There you are. I knew you right off. Oh, go on. I showed no, you. No, you didn't show me at all. It's just saying I picked you out myself. Just like that, you got the same... You got the same... Uh, same... Uh, firecracker eyes. You got beautiful eyes. You were, you were pretty then, weren't you? You think so? Very pretty. <laughs> well, that happens to be Helen Kleinspiegel. <laughs> This is me over here in the fourth row. You're over all, in the fourth row. <laughs> so that grew up to be you. Huh? <laughs> Quite an age we live in. See, say, where, where did you sit in this classroom? Did you sit around here? Mm-hmm, right there. Isn't that yeah. wonderful? Yeah, the seat used to have a squeak in it. <laughs> Drove everybody crazy. Wait a second. I tell you. Oh, yeah, See? yeah. Same yeah. as always. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> look at the books in the desk. Oh, it brings back such wonderful memories. What's that one? What's that um, one? The poems of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Oh, look. Look. High water. Oh, yeah. By the shores of Gitche Gumi. You know, you know, me, me, I was always a uh, charge of the light brigade fellow. Oh, I loved that. How did, that, how did that used to go? Charge the light brigade. Half a league, half a league, half a league. By the shores of Gitche Gumi, by All the shining the valley of water, stood the wigwam of Nakoma, daughter the light of brigade. the moon Nakoma. Charge for the guns, he said. Into the valley of death rode the 600, forward the light brigade. Wasn't there a man dismayed? Not though the soldiers knew. Someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply. Theirs but to reason why. Theirs but to do or die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them. Cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered. Stormed at with shot and shell. Boldly they rode, but well. Into the jaws of death. Into the mouth of hell. Hush! The naked bear will hear thee. Oh, but charge with E-Y-Y, guns, my little they owl. said. Charge! Who is this? Charge! Would you I mind still... charging out of here, Mr. Smith? I still got to sweep up. Okay, okay. Well, sure. Hiya, boys. How's it going? I'm a little late. Sorry, I took Miss Peterman home. Well, Mr. Twiddle, how do we stand on progressive education? Here it is, Rip. Finished and tabulated. Now, just start praying that our figures will be close to stringers. Give me that sheet. Look at it, boys. Just wait till Mackenzie sees this. All right, Ike. Take that report and catch the midnight plane. Me? Now, but I got Mackenzie to... asked you how we did it, just turn your baby blues on him. I'd like to see his... Then face. why don't you go to New York? Don't be silly. We play Waverly Academy tomorrow. Look awful funny if I suddenly disappeared all of a sudden. Oh, Rip, look, look. How would you like to call this whole deal off, huh? Kick it over. Kick you, it over? Yeah, you don't have to keep it up on our account, Rip. So what's the matter with you? I've worked all my life for this, and there it is, all wrapped up in a nice, neat package. What kind of a lame brain do you think I am? Do you think I've been pushing up that hill all these years? Okay, to... okay, okay. I guess I was way off the beam. I guess you certainly were. Now, get going, Ike. Here's a plane ticket. Tell Mackenzie we can handle two or three or four jobs at once. Maybe more than that. Sure, sure. Call I'll me tomorrow him. night, will you? Yeah, but tomorrow night's the game with Weaverly. Right, call me at 11 o'clock. I'll be right here, Ike. Oh, afternoon, Mr. Smith. Afternoon, Miss Peterman. Hi, Mr. Quincy. Uh, we've been using the gym for dance floor, Mr. Quincy. Did you ever... Uh... Do the samba? No, sir. Can't say I ever did. Well, don't. I just had a demonstration. Do you know what a back pass to Lemma is, Mr. Quincy? Mm, don't know that one either. Well, I'm going to get a demonstration of that right now. My, my. I'm sure ignorant. Okay, okay, Mary. Now, here's the basketball, see? Now, I'll pass the ball to you like this. There. But, hey, hey, what are you trying to do? Knock the wind out of me? Well, throw the ball. Go on, throw it. Well, there. Oh, no. That's, look, that's no way to throw a ball. Like this. Okay? Now, here. Try it again. Okay. 
there. No, Mary. Mary, look, that's no way to throw a ball. Look, it's sort of a forward snap. You sort of push it. Look, suppose a wolf's on the make for you. What do you do? Well, what do you do? Oh, oh, you, uh, you mean, you mean like this? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Will you help me up? Huh? Well, I'm sorry, you no, don't. No, let's try something else. We'll, we'll try the layup shot. No uh, rough stuff, huh? Uh, no, no, no right. rough stuff. Now, the principle of this shot is to sort of stretch yourself as far as you can and just lay the ball up on the basket. See, like this. Oh, look, I can't reach well, like you that. Well, you can try, can't you? Come on. Oh, I'll just stretch. All right, all right. There you are. No, <laughs> well, here, I'll, I'll help. Oh, Come right. on. All right, there you are. Hey. Hey, it got stuck up there. Hey, Mary. I, I said it got... Oh, Rip. Oh, darling. Mary. Mary. That fast dilemma, huh? That ain't what we used to call it. Dance. Wonderful dance, Councilman. Wonderful. How come you're not dancing with Mary Peterman, huh? Mayor cut in. It's on him anyway. Been looking for you, Mr. Smith. Hey, that certainly was some basketball game tonight. First time we've licked Waverly in ten what's him call him? Here. Well, Rip. Well, what, Hoopendegger? Thinking of Mary, huh? Must be having an awful tussle with that conscience of yours. Don't worry about my conscience. What's that? What's going on over there? Oh, looks like the mayor's going to make an announcement. Attention, please, attention. Folks, Mrs. Peterman here says she's got something to tell us. All right, Mrs. Peterman, the floor's yours. As you all know, the Grandview Dispatch very rarely retracts a story. Tomorrow, however, you'll read a retraction concerning Mr. Lawrence Smith. Hey, what is this, Hoopendack? The Dispatch wants to erase any doubt it created about Mrs. Smith's integrity. He's been here only a short while, yet already he seems an old friend. <laughs> well, well, I just thought this a good occasion to apologize for the dispatch and tell him how we all feel. Rip, we're happy and grateful to call you one of us. I, um, I, I wish Mr. Peterman hadn't said all those nice things about me. I... Doubt very much whether I can live up to them. I'd prefer that you reserve judgment until you, well, until you get to know me better, much better. Thank you. Is that you, Rip? What's the matter, Hope and Dagger? Can I step out for a breath of air? Sure you can, sure. Mary was uh, just wondering why you disappeared so fast. People going around making speeches. Just, just give me one year. Just one year. Rip, you've made a lot of friends here. That's worth something, isn't it? I'm going up to my office, Hoop. There's a long-distance phone call coming in for me any minute now. And it's going to tell me that I've got the world by the tail. It may be a rat race, but I'm out in front and I'm going to grab mine. Hello. Hello. Go ahead, Ike. What happened? What did Mackenzie have to say? Oh, it was a perfect job. How close were we? How did we match up against Stringer's survey? Right on the nose. Mackenzie's going nuts. He can't figure out how we did it. He says he's got two other jobs for us. Oh, and uh, uh, Hendricks, uh, Hendricks wants to climb back on board, too. What about him? Why not? Why not? That Hendricks deal run into a hatful. Yeah, yeah. If that Peterman gal doesn't crab everything. Mary's not going to crab anything. Yeah, but she's hepped on changing the town. If she ever puts that Civic Center deal across, we'll... we'll... I'll handle her. Relax. <laughs> My boy, you're an artist. Cut it, will you? We came here to do a job, but nothing's going to under... Hello? Hello? Hello, Rip? Hello? Hey, I... I... Call me back, will you? Thanks, Ike. Trouble with having a newspaper background just develops an instinct for snooping. 
Mary, what... Why'd you come here? I've been looking for you. I heard you on the phone. I found this piece of paper on that desk in there. The miracle of Grandview. What we do, what we think. You have to found Ma's speech tonight. Very funny. Well, we had to work secretly. Nobody's been hurt by it, have they? That's right. Nobody. Well, what are you going to do? You couldn't stand any changes, could you? Well, by all means, hold back progress. Mr. Smith has to make an extra dollar for himself. I certainly think that's stooping very low. Mary, Mary, will you listen you to stop me, Stop at the please? office in the morning, Rip, will you? I have something very interesting to show you. You're too early, Rip. I'm not quite finished with my story. Mary, I, I want to make a deal with you. You're graduating to our front page, Rip. Here's the headline. Lawrence Smith, found to be pole expert. Brandview revealed his miracle town. If you'll kill that story, I'll never show my face around here again. It isn't for myself, Mary. It's for the people here. I, I wouldn't like to see them get confused. What I was doing couldn't harm any of them. But when they read what you're writing, well, I, I don't know. They're, they're human. You can't go around telling people they're special, not even these people. It's deadly. Now, if you love them, Mary, don't do it. I'll have this for you in a minute, Mr. Hodges. Oh, page one, Mary. If, if you just stop pounding that machine and listen to me, I, I suppose you think I've got some sort of an angle or something. Mary, I, you just have to take my word. Here it is, Mr. Hodges. Set it up. And save the first copy for Mr. Smith. Mary, Mary, please. As for you never showing your face around here again, it wouldn't make the least difference to me one way or the other. Any other deals in mind, Rick? No, no. No more deals. When do you plan to return to New York? Well, I'm staying in Grandview. There's a circus coming to this town. A, the greatest, gaudiest, three-ring circus in the history of phony baloney. I don't want to see it, Mary, but I guess I'd better hang around. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. stars will return in Act Three of Magic Town in a moment. It's a pleasure tonight to welcome back to the Lux Radio Theater guest box, Miss Martha Heyer, who has achieved stardom since she made her bow here last year. What's the secret, Martha? Hard work? That's right, Mr. Kennedy, and also the wonderful training I received at RKO, and the privilege of studying great actresses like Rosalind Russell at work. She was thrilling in Morning Becomes Electra. Eugene O'Neill's celebrated drama was certainly in expert hands. Britain's Michael Redgrave and Leo Ginn also contribute to one of the great pictures of our time. Another exciting experience for me was watching John Wayne in the rain day in the love scenes for RKO's new picture, Tycoon. You uh, didn't go on location with the company, did you? No, but Lorraine told me about her experiences when she came back. They had a regular city of 85 tents set up in the High Sierras for the outdoor Technicolor shot. With their own water tower, electric plant, mess hall, and laundry. So I guess life wasn't too rugged. No, Lorraine said even the laundry had all the comforts of home, including Lux Flakes. Hollywood studios are so conditioned to using Lux Flakes for nice things that they just naturally have a supply wherever there are washables to be cared for. I know myself how wonderful Lux is, especially for colors. You're quite right, Martha. Tests prove that. A famous laboratory washed slips and nighties the wrong way with strong soap, hot water, and rough handling. Then, identical garments the Lux way. Those that had Lux care stayed color fresh three times as long. That's handy to know when you're trying to stretch a dollar. Actually, Lux care makes it possible for a girl to have three times as many under things without spending any more. How do you figure that, Mr. Kennedy? Well, instead of spending money just to replace worn, faded looking undies, a girl can buy extra new ones because Lux care keeps those she has lovely looking three times as long. Thank you for coming, Martha Heyer, and best wishes for your continued success. Act Three of Magic Town, 
starring James Stewart as Rip Smith and Jane Wyman as Mary Peterman. The news that Grandview is the perfect barometer of all American opinion has struck the front pages of every newspaper in the country. Overnight hordes of reporters, promoters, and experts of a dozen different varieties have poured into what was once a little community that minded its own business. At the municipal building, Mary is attending a special meeting of the town council. Come in, Mary. Sit down, sit down. I was just telling the councilmen why we're being talked about from coast to coast. People coming in on every train. By car, too, and by bus. Even on what you call it. Foot. Why not? Who would want to live in the perfect town? I don't know why you sent for me, but don't you think you ought to do some planning? Things are moving so fast. That's we... just why we sent for you, to handle our publicity. Another long distance call, Mayor. Who is it this time? Manufacturer wants to build a plant here so he can advertise made in a typical American town. Get his name. I'll call him later. Collect. Yes, sir. Just watch real estate values. Hey, look out the window. The taxi cab company's starting a touring service. Wonderful. Look at what that sign says. Typical tour of the typical town. One dollar. See the public opinion capital of the USA. Where they live, where they work, what they eat. I still say we'd better do some careful thinking. That's just what we've been doing. And here's our first project, Mary. We're going to build booths all over town. Official polling booths where folks can cast their opinion on the question of the week. Oh, now, now, wait a minute. We find out what our citizens are thinking, and we sell the results. Make a fortune for the town. Who's the idiot that dreamed that one up? Oh, yeah. I mean, what's the matter with it? Well, that's our chief export, isn't it? Our whatchamacallit. Our opinion. Well, we're through giving them away. Well, I guess I've seen everything now. Excuse me, Mayor. It's the broadcasting company. They want approval to conduct sidewalk interviews. A daily broadcast from coast to coast. Certainly we approve. Certainly we approve. And now then, Mary, about the... Hey, hey, where'd she go? Mary! Well, Rip, I just spoke to Charlie Stringer in New York. He says we can go to work for him whenever you say. Ah, right, sit down, I right, sit down. I told you this was a wonderful hotel. Great big veranda to watch the three ring circus from. Ringside seats. Hey, bring on your baboon. Oh, Rip, look. What are we hanging around here for? Hang around here, but I helped put on this show, you know. Come on, come on, let's take a bow. Oh, cut it out, Rip. Cut it out and all pipe right, down. All right, cut it out. Pipe down. Now, come on, let's get a hold of that phone and give Stringer your answer, huh? All right, let's 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 give Stringer the answer. Good idea. Now, wait a, wait a minute, there's Mary. Hey, Mary? Afternoon, Miss Peterman. Afternoon, Miss Peterman. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I came to see Mr. Moody. Uh, ex- excuse me, please. How do you like your town now, huh? How do you like your fancy, beautiful circus of a town now? Hey, I... Get a hold of some train tickets. Come on, we're... We're getting out of here today. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we've called this open meeting of the town council to discuss plans for our new civic center. If this is the plan Mary Peterman's been hollering about, I'm all for it. Oh, but her plan is no longer big enough, Mr. Weaver. We've added a million dollars to the project. Well, it seems to me that's an awful lot of money, Mr. Nickleby. I know this boom has been getting bigger and bigger for almost a month now, but... Yeah, what about paying for all this? I mean, suppose something should go wrong. Well, listen, my friend. In 1890, our grandparents built our municipal building with their own hands. If it comes to it, we can do the same thing. Yes, sir. That's the kind of people we are. me, Mr. Stringer. <laughs> yeah, just look at this, Ike. Did you ever see anything so talk out in your life? Grandview Township Public Opinion Survey. <laughs> and uh, think, to uh, think I was worried about those experts. Hey, get a rip in here. No, brother. I, uh, I'd rather not disturb her, Mr. Stringer. Rip's, uh, Rip's thinking. You mean sleeping? How long's this gonna continue? He slept through most of the conference this morning. Suddenly he woke up and said... I hope they remember the back pass dilemma. What's the matter with that guy? Makes a lot of noise, doesn't it? Well, Rip, here it is. The first Grandview poll. Yeah, let me see it. Gallup also released figures today on the very same subject. How do you feel about a woman for president? Well, uh, exactly opposite results, Rip. That town's gone nuts. 
Grandview will be laughed out of existence. It's already started. The newspapers and radio have been at it all day. What are they saying? Well, listen. Listen to this guy on the radio. I guess he's still at it. Let's see. John has always been right. It turned out to be ridiculously wrong. Completely out of tune with the country. Well, there should be a moral to all this. No one has the right to assume they know it all. Now, what this little town of Grandview lost was humility. And when you've lost that, my friends, you've lost everything. Poor Grandview. Grandview fiasco results in wholesale departures. Hundreds of families leaving town daily. Real estate values collapse in Grandview County. Dozens of business firms closing as Grandview bubble bursts. Mr. Smith, why it is you, ain't it? Didn't recognize you at first in the dark. Hello, Mr. Quincy. Thought you was in New York. No, I just got off the train. Guess you uh, heard about us, huh? Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you suppose anybody's in there tonight? There, in the, in the old meeting hall? Yeah. Uh, not very likely, Mr. Smith. He seems like everybody's sort of hiding these days. I guess it's all right if I go in. Isn't it? Oh, sure, sure. Go on in. Uh, good to have seen you again. Rip. Well, I didn't know anyone was... Oh, Mary. They, um, they don't come here anymore. They don't even talk to each other. Hey, that's no good, is it? People ought to talk to each other. How's... How's Ma? Oh, Ma's the same. Rip, why did you come back? I had to come back, Mary. I don't know. I, I had to. I, I couldn't work. I couldn't even think. I, Mary, I... I love you. The, the nights I lay awake hearing you say that. I love you, Mary. There was... There was a news story came over the wire the other day. A married woman who fell in love with another man. Her her husband stood in their way, so they finally killed him. They thought they were free, but their crime created a terrible wall between them. Until they destroyed each other. We murdered a town, Rip. You and I. We killed an idea my father devoted a lifetime to. And nobody cared. Nobody cares. But there must be some way to... There must be something we can do. Now, wait a minute, Smith. Just what is it you're trying to tell me? That something's got to be done to save this town, Mr. Nickleby. They've always followed you. Get them to do something startling, something that'll give them that old bounce again. Why don't you get them... To start that building, that civic center. With what? The town's broke. With taxes. Tax yourself at such a fantastic rate, it'll be the talk of the country. You're crazy. Okay, I'm crazy, but it'll take something crazy to wake them up. Look, when I was here before, I used to hear a lot of talk about Senator Wilton. This, this was his hometown before he went to Washington. What Senator Wilton got to do with this? Well, he was on the same train I was. He's here now on a visit. He told me he's willing to do anything he, anything he can to help. Now, suppose we got a group together to do the initial financing. Would you take charge? You try anything like that and I'll stop it. This town's through. Finished. Oh, it's you, Mr. Smith. Well, come in. Come in. Thank you, Senator Weldon. Mira's mother's already here. I got hold of her right after you phoned me this morning. Rip. Rip, is that you? Hello, Ma. Oh, it's good to see you, Rip. Thanks. Thanks. Well? What's happened? Any luck? I saw Nickleby last night and the others this morning. They all tell me I'm crazy. When I think of all those big statements they were making a couple of months ago, what was that the mayor said? We'll build this civic center with our own hands if necessary. Mary wouldn't let us print it, though. What was that? What was... Ma, that... That, uh... that story, that statement the mayor made, is there a copy of that around anywhere? Why, oh, yes, I think so. Senator, may I use your phone? Help yourself. We're going to print that story in today's paper. 
And the mayor wasn't the only one that made fancy statements. But, but that was weeks ago. We mislaid the story. Just found it. Let them sue us. Well, what all that accomplished with? Well, for one thing, it'll wake these people up. Maybe get them back in that town meeting hall again, talking to each other, taking sides. Hello. Hello. Let me speak to Mary Peterman, please. Well, there's the story, Rip, right across our front page. Good, wonderful. Mary, I gave the story out to all the wire services. The other papers are going to print it all across the country. We're going to get these people so much flattering publicity, they'll have to do something. They'll string us up to the nearest tree. Well, at least they'll be doing something together. Now, get your ma and come on over to the town meeting hall. If there's going to be a battle, you know, that's where they'll stay. Come on, I'll see you over there later. There they are, Mayor. Mrs. Oh. Peterman and Mary. Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello, Mayor. Uh, what do you mean by printing that we're going through with the Civic Center? Haven't we been lasted enough? It's outrageous. I'm going to sue for what, then? Libel or something. Can any of you claim that our paper failed to quote you correctly? But that was long ago, under different circumstances. Where's Nickleby? He'll know how to handle yeah. this. I wish you gentlemen would quiet down. There's a broadcast we want to hear. Quiet down? Why, I'm hey, going hey, to hey, raise hey, a Nickleby Nickleby now. Well, I always oh. thought you were a sensible girl, Mary. Is this story your idea of a practical joke? If you're interested in practical jokes, Mr. Nickleby, read some of your own statements. Very funny. Do you realize we have a case against you? And against that fellow Smith, too. He's back of all of this. Turn up the radio, Mary. Wait a minute, wait a minute, please. Listen to the radio just a minute, please. We in ridicule. These wonderful people of Grandview are now plunging into a project of such vision as to arouse the envy of every community in America. Shut that thing off. We, we and going ahead to the, the plan to build a city center, us. even though it may mean sacrifice on the part of every man, woman, and child in Grandview. More power to your Grandview. Godspeed and good luck. Well, that's all we wanted to hear, Mr. Nickleby. Some of you may be crazy, but no one's going to sweet talk me into going broke. Now, what I would... Half the town's coming here. Look, there's Rip Smith now with those high school kids. The basketball team. Hey, there's my Watson, my son. You're Stu Nickleby. Come on in, boys. It's your town too, you know. All you folks, come on in. All right, Junior. What's all this about? Well, Pop, you promised us all a new whatchamacallit, high school. And, well, we want it. Hank, you go on home this minute. Yes, sir. Well, except we've talked this over, Dad, and we've decided if men like you quit the team, we're going to quit, too. We don't want to live in a town we have to be ashamed of. Are we going to stand here and let a bunch of kids tell us how to run our affairs? We're not trying to run your affairs, Dad. Pip says you're all wonderful people, but you've just lost your nerve. Oh, listen to me. Why not? Why can't we do it? Our fathers didn't quit when they were in a jam. That's when they started to fight. Now, just what is it that's so wrong with us? For heaven's sake, Mary, it takes money to build. Where's it coming from? Well, let me read a statement of yours, Mr. Mayor. If necessary, we'll build it with our own hands. Well, well, that was a long time ago. Mary, are you suggesting that we do that? Actually build it with our own hands? Well, certainly. I suppose if everybody pitched in and helped... This is idiotic. The property's been sold. What? The council it's approved it. Sold? Oh, oh, oh. The council approved it. It's the space I paid All right, Joe, go on. Speak, speak now, go on. Okay, Rip. Hey, Dad. Hey, Pop. Now, what do you want, Joe? Well, you're on the council. Rip says you had no right to approve it. Rip says a thing like that's got to be put up to the voters. Why, well, hey, of course it's got to be put up to the voters. Well, what about it, Mr. Nickleby? We were going to do that, of course. Meanwhile, we just assumed you people wouldn't care. Oh, wouldn't care? This bit is right. We just plain lost our nerve. Wouldn't care if we didn't get a chance to vote? No, sir. Maybe whether a town lives or dies isn't important to some people, but it is to me. I feel like my own family's breaking up, and I don't like it. And if starting part of the Civic Center, like, say, a new high school can save it, then I'm for it at any price. I organize all the workmen in town, the bricklayers and the plumbers. I called up my office and what's it? Supervise the whole project. Oh, gee, that's what you call it, Pop. Well, well I'll furnish the carpenters. I'll put in the fixtures. I line up the painters. We'll yeah. supply the pupils. Well, I have uh, a couple of them anyway. We'll be married. Oh, Rip, it's so wonderful. Everybody's going to help. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. That's something we'll be able to take care of ourselves. Our stars will return for their curtain calls in a moment. 
How come, Libby, you're reading Mother Goose rhymes? Why, I've discovered how Mother Goose solved the dishwashing problem, John. How was that? Well, she ate with a spoon, and when she was finished, the uh, dish ran away with the spoon. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> Libby. <laughs> well, I know lots of women who wish dishes would run away after a meal. Since they don't, let's make a suggestion. Use Lux Flakes for dishes. You're right. With Lux, you avoid one of the worst things about dishwashing. Horrid dishpan hands. Yes, ladies, you can prove for yourselves how soft and smooth Lux leaves your hands. Even if they are rough and red now from strong suds, you'll see definite improvement in just a few days. Yes, changing from strong soap to Lux Flakes actually takes away dishpan redness. Many tests have proved it. And, John, you know how we women watch pennies like a hawk these days. You ought to say that Lux is really thrifty for dishes. It goes further. Because Lux suds are so rich, they wash up to twice as many dishes as the same weight of ten other leading soaps tested. Yes, indeed. Lux is thrifty. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Mr. Keeley in Washington, D.C., and the stars on the stage of the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood. If Rip Smith could poll our listeners on their reaction to tonight's Lux Radio Theater play, I'm sure he'd get enthusiastic answers. Thanks to the good work of our stars, Jimmy Stewart and Jane Wyman. <laughs> I only wish I could have been there to have watched you two in person. Well, we certainly missed you, Bill. Seems strange to see that producer's chair unoccupied. Well, thanks, Jimmy. But I don't know any way in which I could have added to your fine performance. You say that you just started your new picture, Bill? The Street with No Name? Yes, we spent the day at the FBI Academy in Quantico, getting some authentic scenes in their drive against crime. Well, it sounds like a very interesting, much-needed picture, Bill. And you have two fine young stars in Mark Stevens and Richard Whitmark. Yes, I certainly have. And I'm extremely grateful, too, for the cooperation that we're having in Washington. When do you get back, Bill? Well, not for another ten days, I'm afraid. But incidentally, Jimmy, before I left, I caught a preview of your latest picture, Northside 777. I enjoyed it immensely. Thanks very much, Bill. Right after Christmas, I go to work again on another one with Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, and speaking of Christmas, uh, I understand, Bill, that you have something very special coming up on Lux next week. Yes, next Monday night, in keeping with the holiday spirit, we're presenting one of the greatest Christmas stories ever filmed with all of its original fine stars. Maureen O'Hara, John Payne, Edwin Gwen, and Natalie Wood in Miracle on 34th Street. Well, you couldn't have a better play for Christmas, Bill. Yes, a prize Santa Claus package because it concerns none less than Chris Kingle himself bringing that gentleman to life in a warm and human Christmas story that it should appeal especially to the children in your family. We hope they'll join us. Well, it sounds like a treat for young and old alike, Bill. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night, and a very merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Christmas is a time for sharing and giving. And this year, we Americans have an opportunity to give the greatest gift of all, that of life itself to millions of starving Europeans. We can do it by pledging ourselves to observe to the letter the food conservation program, by eating no meat on Tuesdays and no eggs on Thursdays, and by saving at least a slice of bread a day. A small sacrifice for us, but one that can help those nations that believe in freedom and democracy make peace on Earth a permanent reality. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Maureen O'Hara, John Payne, Edmund Gwen, and Natalie Wood in Miracle on 34th Street. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Washington. Jane Wyman appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers, producers of The Voice of the Turtle. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is rebroadcast to our men and women overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. 
And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to have all your children join you next Monday night to hear Miracle on 34th Street with Maureen O'Hara, John Payne, Edmund Gwen, and Natalie Wood. Pepsodent won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families throughout America compared new Pepsodent toothpaste with the brands they'd been using at home. By an overwhelming average of three to one, they preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodent toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. Yes, with families who made comparison tests, Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Miracle on 34th Street with Maureen O'Hara, John Payne, Edmund Gwen, and Natalie Wood. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. <laughs>